with no delay let's begin the technical session for fourth technical session will be chaired by dr sunila sharma associate professor department of english government college nalaga district solon himachal pradesh india thank you kartika uh, i think i'm uh, comfortably visible and audible right yes ma'am you are audible all right thank you so much kartika and uh, i i don't know how much we have one hour at our hands right yes ma'am for, for this session so we are starting with this session at about quarter to quarter to 3 right uh so i welcome everybody uh all the participants uh to this session 4 on uh this uh 9th of uh, october and uh, i take this opportunity to congratulate uh nesmani uh, memorial christian college kanyakumari and cape comoran trust for organizing uh this wonderful international uh giving this platform international platform to so many participants and i've been uh, with the past two sessions and this is a wonderful platform for sharing uh, eclectic pieces of research work and so much of variety has already been displayed over these past two sessions um so um and thank you to uh, dr vasudeva and dr apyudita for having invited me to this um conference and this session session 4 wherein we have these five speakers um well uh having said this uh, let us not wait uh, waste any time further and start with the the first session i uh, let me see i think i had seen mantha uh, padma bhav bandavi am i i hope i'm uh, correct in my pronunciation mantha padma bhav bandavi ji prakash rao yes mantha padma bhav padma bandavi prakash rao yeah. head of the department of english from swami vivekanand vidyalaya latur maharashtra right yes, ma'am welcome and um, to all the participants uh the title of her paper is struggle for the survival in the fault in our stars uh so uh let's not take any more time uh um, mantha ji uh we start right away with your paper yes ma'am thank you ma'am good afternoon everyone uh, i am mantha padma the present paper titled struggle for the survival in the fault in our stars is about the struggle and the survival of the diseased people particularly persons suffering from cancer we all are aware that the present social scenario may, that many people are prone to abnormal death diseases that's because of the new diseases such as swine flu heart attacks and so many diseases which are uh, arriving newly cancer is one of the invasive and geopardizing disease which is taking the lives of many including youth therefore the present paper is about the tragedy of the youth anguished from cancer the paper also aims at exploring the struggle for the survival of the cancer prone youth and their thwarting situation in the society an attempt has also been made to analyze the dying voices of the cancer affected youth from their psychological and social perspective the story the fault in our star written by john green moves around the two main characters hazel grace and augustus waters they both hail from indianapolis they both are disease mates hazel grace suffers from thyroid cancer augustus from bone cancer isaac from eye cancer michael from leukemia 
and Liga from the cancer of appendix. The thought of cancer itself leads to dejection, even among the healthy ones. In a true sense, their life is a conflict between life and death and an everlasting strife to lead a normal life. In Western countries, support groups are created to extend mental and spiritual support to the deceased ones. In the meets, they give an account of their depressingly miserable life stories. Their dialogue leads to an understanding that they are different from healthy persons and they need to struggle even though they knew that very well the end of the battle is sure to be lost as Isaac, one of the characters in The Fault in Our Stars, lost his eyes and Augustus his limb. As a part of the custom of the support groups, as John Green mentions, they recall the list of dead people who died of cancer and pray for them. Even their prayers substantiate the idea that they are cancer survivors and need a spiritual hold to face the truth of death, which reflects their psychology. On several occasions, they find themselves timid and seek God's help for the moral support. The role of parents and elders in the case of cancer patients is very significant. In the novel, has the fault in our stars, Hazel's mother supports and aids her right from the rising of bed and to the getting off to the bed. We, I would like to introduce Hazel and Augustus, our neighbors. And uh, Hazel also suffers from cancer. And uh, Augustus also suffers from cancer, as I have told earlier. So Hazel's mother supports and aids her right from the rising of the bed and to the getting off to the bed. She rejoices her birthdays. She wants to make every day a special day for Hazel. She takes everywhere her, where Hazel desires to go. She takes Hazel's to, Hazel to Amsterdam to meet the writer of an imperial affliction, Peter Van Hurtel. John Green raises the psychological issues of cancer patients which is very palpable. The news of the death of Caroline Mathers brings down Hazel, who is already suffering from the cancer. In order to come out of the trauma of the death of her friend, Caroline, Hazel decides to live a best life on that day. The behavior of Caroline Mathers before her death is very agonizing as it is described by the writer when she suffers at the deathbed in the hospital. Not only the patients, but also the family members undergo stress and it is the reality. The pain and sufferings of these cancer patients and the sufferings of the loved ones for the parents make the entire family irksome. A feeling of discomfort is very common among the deceased. And this issue has been raised by this particular social perspective of uh, John Green, we can observe. They get a sort of complex, these cancer patients get a sort of complex when they find themselves different from others. The manner Hazel carries her oxygen container with her is one of the causes of her discomfort. The manner people stare at her when she goes out, when she moves out, with sympathetic outlook, aggravates her frustration. And the same is the case with all the deceased people who look different from the other people. They need a supportive hand rather than sympathy. John, Greeks, John Green also emphasizes that 
isolation on the other hand also causes nervous breakdown in the deceased it is the chief responsibility of the associates and support groups to extend support to the patients the psychological as well as emotional issues of the family members should also be taken care along with the deceased another important aspect that troubles the cancer patients and their family is the weak economy several parents stake their lives to provide a good treatment on that account they even face the financial difficulty hazel's parents also suffer from the weak economy as they spend much of their income on her treatment moreover the psychological problems of the patients increase if the moral support is not extended by the society john green also advocates that doctor's positive role is essential in providing a moral support to the deceased persons and also to the patients a good doctor must give a positive motivation to them instead of demoralization in the novel dr maria passes detrimental comments on hazel's health and lung transplantation maria says i quote i understood no use wasting good lungs on a hopeless case on hearing that hazel says my dad started crying i was the alpha and omega of my parents suffering so the statement of hazel reflects the doctor's attitude towards the cancer patients we know that man lives with a hope to live happy and healthy life the love birds in the novel that is hazel and augustus feel god has done something unjust to them they want to live a happy life they want to live a married life together but they feel that god has done something unjust and unreasonable thing with them they broke down when they comprehend that they are short lived augustus the fiance of hazel tries to ease hazel by saying i'll fight it i'll fight it for you don't worry about me hazel augustus words to fight and come and overcome the fear and anxiety of death is not worthy over here when they hear god's call their dying voices turn more soft hoping to escape the nearing death thus john green advocates to support serve and to be compassionate towards the deceased in order to make them feel fine secured without any offense so as to carry their joyful and lovable moments to the heavenly abode so this is all about the fault in our stars in which john green has attempted to portray the characters at the youth which who suffer from cancer and their emotions and feelings at the same time the social perspective towards them thank you ma'am uh well i would invite any comments or questions or queries from the participants anyone so mantha ji i congratulate you for this uh, wonderful treatise of uh, research you have uh, successfully analyzed uh this wonderful piece of you know narrative uh i think it's from the perspective of a cancer patient yes. the fault in our stars 
Well, um, as I was listening to you uh, talk about uh, your your synthesis or analysis of the work, I thought you had uh, you had peeled off layer by layer uh, the 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 problems and the the suffering that that cancer patients go through. Uh, you've dealt with uh, the various roles uh, that that various stakeholders play in their lives. Uh, social, moral, uh, financial, medical, and then uh, very importantly, um, our family and the self. How yes. the self, uh, you know, deals with the situation. How the self breaks down and then reinvents and improvises. How Hazel, at one point of time, when she comes to know about the death of Caroline, she thinks of living the life the best to the best. So. Um, uh, John Green has, uh, you know, uh, taken this perspective, uh, um, you know, the cancer patient's perspective and how, you know, no one else except themselves, they have to come to the level of expect acceptance and then, you know, deal with it. Of course, you need help from every quarter when you're dealing with something as uh, uh, drastic as cancer, the yes, you know how you have embarked on the paper, you know talking about when one comes to know even a normal healthy person is shaken at the name of the yes. dreadly uh, disease. So it was a wonderful um, uh, presentation. Thank you, and uh, uh, congratulations on that. Uh, nevertheless, I was just thinking yes. that. Um, Hazel and Augustus, they have uh, this kind of misgiving that they could not culminate their relationship or they could not go ahead with it for a lifelong. But I just felt that how beautifully John Green uh, gives us this picture of, of, of the, you know, the love that yes. uh, that blossomed between these souls. And on a very platonic or maybe you know, on a very spiritual note, we come to an end and we somehow we somehow realize this that you know uh, we normal people do not uh, come across such love that these people beyond our imagination are strong on. yeah so thank you so much and with this we head on to our next thank presenter you. uh miss amrita no uh, amrita no uh, mogar am i right amrita has joined has amrita joined us amrita yes ma'am Yes, yes let's see you have. Uh, so she's from Department of English, Karnataka University, Dharwad. And she talks about her work on Muriel Spark as modernist Anglo-American uh, no, novelist, right? And uh, yes, well, Amit Amrita, uh, I think we have had a plethora of uh, presentations, but you're going to talk about Anglo-Americans. After I joined, uh, this is, I think, going to be a first paper. But nevertheless, let's go on and listen to what you have to say. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, Amrita, we can hear you. Yes, madam. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. It's hearing, Mara? Yes, you're audible. OK. Uh, today, I will talk about Muriel Sparks as a modernist Anglo-American novelist. Muriel Sparks as a, uh, and her career stretches into postmodern era. Muriel Sparks depicts Anglo-American and European Christian life after the Second World War. She can be called a continental writer because she writes about Scotland in her masterpiece, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, and England was very, very much uh, picturized in her most of her novels. America has been described in her The Hot House by the East River, and Italy and Rome uh, in her uh, novel Territorial Rights. She writes about Catholicism in the comforters, working class people in the ballad of Fakam Ray and crime in the territorial rights. Marian Spark has visited the Holy Land Israel in 1960s with a view 
to write about Jeeves' novel. She had many Jeeves friends attended a Jeeves conference in America in 1962, where she met Jeeves critic Lionel Trilling. He has supported to her to uh, uh, picturize the Jesuit in her most of the novel. Mariel Spark stayed in America more than 30 years and she, she had a house in Manhattan. She now New York City in 1960. Publishers and readers enjoyed her writings with more pleasure. Her novel, The Hot House by the East River, is a masterpiece. The East River Fall flows in New York City. It is one of the strongest and most jarring work. The novel is about the city's wealthy people and their empty lives. Mariel Sparks, the next novel, The Abyss of Creep. It was published in 1974. Investigations of an upper-class English convent affiliated to both Benedictine and Jesuit order. The newly elected abbess Alex Alexandria is well equipped with modern gadgets and propagandist skills to manipulate her sisters into compliance with her evil designs. She appreciated the state of art. art. American President Richard Nixon's expletive deleted in as Nixon produced a brief sense of crisis in her Modern Thoughts, page number 1903, is applicable to this novel. In her novel, The Hot House by the River, it was published in 1970s, Manhattan, overlooking the East River with the throwbacks to 1944. It means after the Second World War. Britain, where they started their relationship, Paul and Paul notices that Elsa always has a fixed shadows because Elsa had a uh, affair with Kale. He is basically a German expo, but she pretended that she was very friendly with Paul. Paul always notices that Elsa is not in a correct mode. That's why uh, Paul always investigate Elsa. And she, he knows that he, she had uh, suffering some uh, insanity. He recognizes that a German expo is died before 1944. But Paul refers that or believes that Kale is died. In fact, there appears to be some questions on whether Kale is died or, or he would be killed in the some perspective in that Mariel Sparks want to express that modern views and Anglo-American views in her novels. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, anyone who wants to talk about uh, the paper with the Amrita? Yes, ma'am. Is yes, anyone interested? Any comments or any queries that one would like to share with her? Well, Amrita, through your paper, um, throughout, I felt that you uh, were traversing the works of Muriel Spark, um, basically embarking on two of them. Yes, ma'am. Um, and uh, because there was some kind of disruption caused uh, by the internet, I could get the second part on in which you were talking about the hot house yes, and uh, the character of Elsa and her affair with the, the German Expo. Yes. And yes. then Paul having some doubts about her sanity. Yes. And I thought that, you know, she talks, I mean, uh, Spark here deals with the stresses and the, you know, the uh, uh, problems emanating from people in, in this era after the World Wars and uh, people were sort of, you know, 
uh, trying to adjust with the changed world, with the world that was different now. There was so much, uh, you know, so many things happening. There was this uh, economic recession all over. So, um, yeah, but I, I just felt that you should have or you could have dealt with the subject in a more uh, kind of, uh, you could have taken up more than... Uh, two works maybe then if you had to compare them and then come to a you know forming a view point or maybe you could have just used one text and kind of analyzed Muriel Spark and the role she played in um in the in in, in the in the ethos of American literature of the time uh well I don't know I just feel that you I think it's a very uh, wonderful subject to to deal with uh, but some a more detailed work, maybe maybe you have already done and you thought that the time was short. So whatever the reason may be, I think it's uh, this paper needs to be kind of expanded or dealt with in detail. Uh, looking at the, you know, the psycho social aspect of the, the, you know, the subject of Elsa and her life around her and the American context at the background, talking about Manhattan and calling it, you know, with it's visible with the toy, with a very, very, um, you know, pertinent title, Hot House. And ha you having tell told us about this. So I think we need to uh, really uh, work on this. This is a wonderful subject, though. Thank you so much. Well, um, uh, then uh, I think we carry on uh, with the, the next presentation here. And our next presenter uh, is uh, Miss Ranjana, I think. Uh, do yes, have... ma'am. Yeah? Very Hello. good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Ranjana. Uh, I think we, uh, we should catch on with the time and not waste it. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Ranjana is a research scholar and uh, she's uh, accompanied by Dr. Disha Khanna, uh, her research uh, supervisor and who is deputy dean at GNE University. And the topic of the research paper is Khalil Gibran analyzed under the uh, lens of American literature. So uh, let us go ahead uh, with your work, Ranjana. Please. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to share my presentation on the work which I'm going to present. Just give me a few minutes. Okay, I think it is uh, facing some technical issue. I would like to present through my presentation. I will read it out. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Please carry right. on. Right. So as ma'am has already told you, the topic which I'm going to present is Khali Gibra Analyze Under the Lens of American Literature. And I am Ranjana Burma. Working under the supervision of Dr. Disha Khanna, GNE University, Pagwara in Punjab. So I have used important keywords in my research paper, which is as follows. One is blissfulness, which means state of pure blissfulness where there is no area of doubt. Enlightenment, which means path that leads towards knowledge and vast doorways of knowledge opens at the same time. Ignorance, that also leads to a path of knowledge where all are aware, we are we get aware about what is going on because we are having a knowledge. Knowledge is gateway to success. Perspective means way of looking at various things and that too with the positive attitude. So objective of my research paper, the sole objective of this research paper is to present the works of Khalil Gibra, prose and parables in the light of American literature. And it blends very well with the American literature because American literature is based on some of the pivotal themes such as happiness, peace, war, wisdom, 
freedom, dignity, isolation, loneliness, innocence, survival of the fittest, and above all, the American dream. Kali Gibra clearly talks of all these things in his works, be it the prophet, the wanderer, sand and form, the madman, the forerunner, the earth gods, all these things are very much pertinent in his works. So it is gelling well with the American dream. To continue with my objective itself, Gibra works and themes are valuable and full of worth till date from the perspective of American literature. That is because whatever theme he has talked about, about in various, of his, various works, he is presenting it if, which relates to our day-to-day -day life. For example, he talks about joy, sorrow, good, evil, war, teachings about children, food, homes, these things are very much pertinent in the works of Khali Gibra and well and goes well with American literature as well. That's why I have taken this writer along with American literature and analyze, try to analyze the works of Khali Gibra under the lens of American literature. So Khali Gibra works is a deep ocean where one comes out by filling a bucket full of blissfulness. If one starts reading works of Khali Gibra, one really can't stop reading it. Such is the knowledge, abundant knowledge, which uh, is provided through his works. The works are endless and the knowledge is really an ocean full of knowledge, be it the wonder and names of the valley, Purnana, tears and laughter, secrets of the heart, each and every uh, work of Khali Gibra of par excellence. So the major scope which I have covered in this uh, research paper is comprehending and appreciate works of Khali Gibra in a better manner in the light of American literature. Implement Gibra's life skill for a better future, especially the element of peace. Because we are now living in such a tech-savvy world where we are not a, having a peace of mind. One is busy inventing a money and a lot of other things where peace is missing. Gibra, Gibra works really help us to make our personality better and well-groomed in each and every aspect. And American literature do talk about these things which I have taken up. And reading Gibra works, it certainly adds to our knowledge and making our personality very, very balanced. Apart from this, Khali Gibra works develop a positive perspective towards life. When we are having positive perspective to deal with things in life, certainly we are able to present ourselves in a better manner. Because where negativity enters, that thing ultimately loses its value. And last but not the least, Khali Gibra uh, never leaves any door of doubt and guilt in life. This is very much clear from the works which are there, be it uh, names of the valley, the broken wings, secrets of the heart, tears and laughter. And apart from this, it developed closeness with spirituality. Anega really takes us close to spirituality, peace, uh, because these things are need of an art. And as per it goes well with the American literature, People are so lonely and isolated in America, living overseas. They have a lot of money, uh, material asset. But what they lack is they lack the peace of mind. They don't know what to do. They are suffering from loneliness. They are not mentally stable, well-balanced personality. That's why I have taken this concept. Peace gives rise to tranquility, calmness, and satisfaction. When Khali Gibra works are seen under the perspective of American literature. Apart from this, Khali Gibra glorifies the novice mindset of an individual. Gibra unlayered multiple layers of human personality and tries to present an enlightened picture of human beings in his work. In his work, tears and laughter, names of the valley, secret of the heart, between night and morn. It also teaches us life values through American literature. 
because literature is such a vast area it can be analyzed and seen from every angle plus wherever and whenever we read literature it certainly adds to our knowledge because it's an ocean and present house full of knowledge in each and every aspect and to write uh, to present this uh, i'm really sorry i am not able to present my ppt but for this i have seen and i have gone through various uh, works of kanegebra i have uh, visited various online website to name a few i have seen and uh, gone through gk chesterton dr pv vidyanathan jane jolan somerset william somerset for this uh, these things really helped me to present my paper in the conference and apart from this i would like to say that there are themes uh, if i broadly talk about this theme they are related to our day to day life affairs be it marriage love freedom children homes women wine solitude each and everything is well presented in his uh, in his works and whenever we read kaligibra works it unleashes hidden layers under the carpet of life and enlightens humanity and a person who is reading with the new perspective and attitudes and set uh, minds and setting mind as human personality because after all our life is governed by these elements which are broadly presented in khalil ibrahim work and broadly analyzed under the lens of american literature american literature talks about these things in a very very pertinent and uh, i can say broad manner and khalil gibran also writes in a very very broad manner all these concept because after all by the end of the day what we all need is peace calmness and uh, get rid of loneliness and isolation and he has presented very well in his works so uh, with this i conclude my uh, research paper and uh, Uh, i would like to say that as i was uh, here in the conference this morning so uh, mr alam bam singh he has also presented his research paper on american literature and he talked about uh, especially california which is a land of prosperity and land of expectations uh, people go there to have a better the living standard and uh, but on the other hand it is full of hollowness uh, which is there which is there in american dream and madam kusum arora she has also elaborated very well on the american dream and mr coffee she he has also talked about american dream and what is the position of uh, women at that particular time and now because uh, as he talked about that women are not meant for kitchen and people took steps for the women empowerment to a great extent in america and that's why the country is well developed so uh, with this i conclude my uh, research paper that i have presented here the i would like to say that whatever uh, the whatever topic i have chosen i have chosen keeping in mind that aspect of american literature is well covered in my topic kaligibra analyzed under lens of american literature as both blends very well in a, a very well with each other themes which i have taken is very much important very much crucial in american literature as well thank you so much thank you ranjana uh, thank you ma'am Uh, your paper has thrown a new light on whatever has been said um, yes, in these uh, sessions, uh, because I think um, yes, uh, the history of American literature when we go through the uh, various stages through which it has has gone, uh, right from the struggle for freedom, then the women's right movements, then we come to the you know the renaissance of uh, American literature, and then finally we come to an age where it's matured and it's kind of universal, and we come to know that when we want we come to a stage where we see that you know there are several voices, several sentiments, and there are. Uh, 
all kinds of literatures being written and it's kind of everywhere and it's a world literature now so uh, yes, yes. as we go through these stages uh, we come across your paper which talks about this lebanese writer yes, american writer of lebanese origin right who has brought kind of an uh, you know a site of an oasis in the middle of this chaos and how you presented his works and how you presented his themes uh, providing us a path to uh, you know peace and self discovery and uh, you know these these sentiments for which we you know there's a quest in every heart and soul these days in the middle of all kind of chaos everywhere i think it was a wonderful presentation the idea of uh, you know the idea of picking up um, gibra as you call uh, uh, is that you know being from a lebanese uh, background and talking about uh, anglo americans and then coming to the america of today where america actually is uh, you know a, a, a central uh, you know uh, an energy which, which on on which the world revolves or uh, on the basis of whose command things happen sometimes at the international level we also see how hollow it is and not that the things are any any different from the time of world wars and today with covid 19 having stuck everywhere and everyone with the wars like ukraine happening and and we see what is happening on the international platforms everywhere on the politics everywhere i think your paper brings in a new light over american literature wherein we are seeing this lebanese writer um playing a very uh, important role a very relevant role to uh, to uh, to add to the american literature in his own way um I would invite anyone from the uh, participants who would like to come and share their views or uh, interact with you, uh, Ranjana. Um, yes, or Ask any queries if they have. Yes, ma'am. Over to anyone. Yes, please. What I feel, ma'am, Khili Gibra is a treasure house of knowledge. We really get a sense of life and living. Yes, and to, yes. and to many uh, many readers who start uh, with Gibran, yes. we do get a hang that he's oriental sometimes. He's very right. uh, spiritual in his approach yes. towards life and themes that he picks up. Yeah. I have read a number of his work, ma'am, till now, and I really find it very interesting and a sense of life and living in a positive and upgrading manner. Really, it's a wonderful writer, I must say. It's all the uh, all thanks to my supervisor supervisor who has really guided me well and I am able to present and uh, have a very good presentation over here. So congratulations yes. to uh, thank you, Dr. Kanna. And I think uh, since uh, maybe the aftermath of lunch uh, is taking toll on our participants, <laughs> so we move further with our next speaker. Thank you so much, Vandana. It was wonderful. Listening Ranjana, ma'am. Ranjana, thank you. Yeah. Thank okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day ahead, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. So, so friends, we move on to our next speaker, and the next paper comes from comes from Miss Garima Singh, research scholar at Baba Mast Nath University, Rohtak, Haryana, and the title of her paper is uh, Magic realism in postmodern literature and i'm sure we are going to hear something very nice and new that adds to the caliber here um and welcome uh, welcome here i think we find garima somewhere has has garima joined good afternoon ma'am yeah so hello garima welcome to the session and uh, let's go on straight away to your paper thank you so much ma'am in my paper i would like to shed some light on the concept of magic realism in postmodern literature the term magic realism was first used by german art critic franz roe in 1925 
to describe a growing trend in visual arts which was about to replace expressionism franz ro criticized expressionism for its exaggerated preference to fantastic objects whereas magic realism according to him celebrates the mundane along with the tint of fantasy and magic later it was turned into a more significant literary moment around 1940s by latin american writers they are often credited for contributing significantly to make it a worldwide success it has now become a characteristic feature of postmodern literature widely used in literary works by writers from almost all countries of the world in simplest words magic realism means introduction of certain magical elements in the middle of a realistic story a writer on one hand paints a realistic and relatable world view in his work and simultaneously adds on certain elements of magic wonder and fantasy in that seemingly realistic story this narrative technique is known as magic realism the works of magic realism generally have unique plot structures main practitioners of magic realism in literature are alijo carpentier franz kafka gabriel garcia marquez salman rushdie george louis borges neil gaiman alice hoffman nicola barker etc main aim of my paper is to trace the origin of magic realism with special reference to the significant works of postmodern literature that fall under the category of magic realism and to decode the purpose behind its deployment in 1925 german art critic historian and photographer franz ro coined the term magic realism during one of his discussions on the merits of a painting his primary aim behind this invention was to appreciate a group of painters for breaking away from the decade long tyranny of abstraction in art and moving towards realism in art he wanted to celebrate those painters but the term magic realism in literature was introduced in 1940 by alejo carpentier he was a famous latin american novelist he is known as the first ever literary practitioner of magic realism and he greatly influenced the forthcoming practitioner of the style like gabriel garcia marquez etc alejo carpentier's novel The Kingdom of This World is one of the earliest and finest work written by deploying the concept of magic realism in literature. It is about Haitian Revolution and it is often known as the representation of marvelous American reality. The book opens with a prologue in which there is a key point which says magic depends on who believes it. In this Carpentier uses magic realism to depict the impact of slavery from an African American point of view. It is the story of Ty Noel an Amer- African slave who has suffered the abuses of slavery under the both the french rulers as well as the black king of haiti henry christophe in this novel the novelist has perfectly amalgamated the real life events with magic myths supernatural forces of nature and rituals of american slaves and the slaves in the novel perceive these unnatural happenings as real for example a voodoo priest called mckendel who is the chief instigator of slave rebellion in haiti is shown to have the ability to transform himself into different forms and shapes transforming at times into a lizard a night moth and a janet similarly the main character of the novel tai noil is also shown having magical powers to transform himself into different forms like once he transforms himself into a goose so these shape shifting powers in mckendel and tai noil add the element of magic and supernatural into a realistic narrative of slave trade and slave rebellion this weaving together of reality and unnatural elements of fantasy magic and wonder is what we call as magic realism so by now we have discussed the coinage of the term magic realism by franz ro and then we talked about agilo carpenter carpentier who was the first writer to use this style but the most quintessential figure who made the concept of magic realism known to the world by massively popularizing it through his literary works is nobel prize winner colombian novelist and short story writer gabriel garcia marquez in his works he wonderfully weaves together the elements of fantasy wonder and magic with seemingly realistic narratives and settings in 1973 he told the atlantic that he adopted the concept of magic realism in his works because 
because that's how life actually was in Latin America. His novels are generally regarded as the best examples of magic realism in postmodern literature. Some of his most prominent novels that fall under this category are One Hundred Years of Solitude. It is a multi-generational story of Bundia family of Mokondo. In this novel, he has used magic realism as a vehicle to subtly criticize the Latin American elite class families who, according to the author, were self-obsessed to the point of being completely ignorant about the mistakes of the past and instead of learning from them, they preferred avoiding them deliberately. Through the portrayal of Bundia families, he depicted how elite class people considered themselves even above the law and reveals how little they learn from their past. In his criticism of this elite superiority, he incorporated the elements of magic and extraordinary events in the middle of ordinary things like in the novel he shows two characters, namely Jose Arcadio Buinda and his beloved Ursula, discussing this, that as their child is an illegitimate one, so it might have animalistic features. Though the child did not have animalistic features, but later on, one of the future child of Bundia family line is shown to have animalistic features, i.e. the baby is born with the tail of a pig. That's how Marquez has blended together the unreal things with real events, therefore making this novel a perfect example of magic realism fiction. Nextly, a short story by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, titled as A Very Old Man with Enormous Wings, is another famous example of magic realism work. The story revolves around an old man with wings who appears in a family's backyard on a stormy night. When the owner of the house, Pelayo, and his wife, Alinda, see this man with wings lying in their backyard, they are left startled because they never witnessed such kind of a human before who has wings. Out of inquisitiveness, they try to speak to him and he responds in an unfamiliar language. Then a neighbor informs the couple that the man with wings is actually an angel. The following day, entire town gathers around him and the crowd starts harassing him like a circus animal instead of treating him like a human being. The main idea of this story is to depict the insensitivity of human behavior towards those who are weak and different in some way from others. Through the portrayal of this man with wings, the writer indirectly is showcasing the trauma that people who are physically different from others face in society, how cruelly they are dealt with. So here, magic realism is used by the writer to depict the inhuman behavior that people exercise in society with fellow human beings if they are in any sense disabled, different, weak, and downtrodden. Another famous work by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which is produced othering to the tradition of magic realism, is Of Love and Other Demons. It is partially based on a legend told to the author by his mother when he was 14. The novel centers around a 12-year-old girl, Sirva Maria, who is bitten by a rabid dog. And she is also pronounced to be possessed by a demon in the novel and is depicted as a girl having long copper hair, which continue to grow even after her death. So here again, he has amalgamated the supernatural element of a demonic enchantment with the ordinary and real incident of a dog bitten girl. Mainly the plot revolves around an unconventional love story between a Catholic priest and this girl, who while healing her from rabies falls in love with her. In this novel, reality is blended with imagination, supernatural element of demonic enchantment and religious superstition of Catholic Church making it an apt example of magic realism. Moving on, German-speaking bohemian novelist and short story writer Franz Kafka has also significantly contributed to the plethora of magic realism novels. His famous novel, The Metamorphosis, is a prime example of magic realism. It is the story of a salesman called Gregor Samsa, who wakes up one morning and finds himself transformed into a monstrous vermin, a huge insect. Due to this strange transformation, Samsa becomes a huge disgrace to his family and he is treated as an outsider in his own house and is depicted as a quintessentially alienated man in the novel. On a deeper level, the motive behind employing the element of magic realism in this novel is to explore the feelings of a man's loneliness and estrangement 
which the writer Franz Kafka himself experienced throughout his life. And that experience of isolation, the feeling of being left out and lonely is depicted by him through the metamorphosis of Gragar Samsa in the novel. Another prominent practitioner of magic realism in postmodern literature is Isabel Allende. She is a famous Chilean writer. Her debut novel, The House of the Spirits, is widely recognized as one of the finest works of magic realism, Yona. It is influenced by Gabriel Garcia Marquez's novel, 100 Years of Solitude. The main plot of this novel revolves around two daughters of Dalvale family, Clara and Rosa. Clara has magical powers. Using those powers, she predicts that there will be an accidental death in their family soon. And shortly, her sister Rosa gets killed by poison, which was actually intended for their father. But the main instance of magic realism is portrayed in the novel through the character of Clara's pet dog called Barabbas. He is shown as a normal pet dog in the beginning of the novel, but later he grows unnaturally and becomes as huge as a horse with a tail that can even clean huge tables in a single wipe. Basically, it is a unique blending of historic family saga, their ordinary life events, along with magic, wonder, and supernatural elements depicted through the character of Clara and her supernatural dog Barabbas, which qualifies it as a perfect magic realism novel. Next prominent practitioner of magic realism is India-born British-American novelist Salman Rushdie. His use of magic realism in his novels is quite organic and raw. He naturally portrays the hard facts and bitter truths of life with the help of magic realism in his novels. His famous novel, Midnight's Children, is, a, is famous worldwide for its extensive use of magic realism. It traces India's journey from British colonial rule to its independence and then Indian partition. The story is narrated by the main protagonist, namely Salim Sinai. In this story, Rashdi has perfectly blended together true historic events fiction and myths to depict the national history of India. Magic realism in this novel is evident in the portrayal of the main character Salim Sinai as he is shown to have telepathic powers and with his powers he can not only communicate telepathically with thousand other midnight children of India but he can also clearly read the minds of those around him. Additionally, Salim Sinai also has a special animal-like sense of smell which helps him to find the other Midnight's children in the novel and create Midnight's Children Conference. Also, the major events of Salim Sinai's life throughout the novel overlap with the ma major historic events of post-colonial India. For instance, in the novel, it is depicted that Salim Sinai was born exactly at the very moment when India got independence on the midnight of 15th August 1947. And due to his extraordinarily coincidental birth and supernatural powers that he possessed, it is depicted in the novel that the then Prime Minister of India vowed to destroy him along with all other Midnight's children. And it is depicted in the novel that in order to destroy the Midnight Children's Conference, the Prime Minister declared a state of emergency. The novel ends with the death of Salim Sinai, who was crushed and beaten to death by a massive crowd, turning him into dust. But before dying, he says that it is not the end and more and more Midnight's Children and that numerous generations will live on this earth and make a difference into, in times to come. This work, therefore, is rightly acclaimed as one of the most successful magic realism novel. In the same sequence of prominent literary figures that have significantly contributed. Think, uh, to... Excuse me, Garima, I think you should wind up your paper now. Ma'am, it's just one minute more, two minutes yeah. more. Thank you. Yeah. In the same sequence, we have Angela Carter. Her novel, Wise Children, is also regarded as a prime example of magic realism. It is a story of two sisters, Nora and Dora. In this novel, realism, magic realism is combined with carnivalesque fiction to create a flamboyant theatrical world within a humble earthy reality. Both Yona complement each other in the novel as they involve fantasy-like events and nightmarish imagery. Wise Children conforms perfectly to magic realism because of its non-chronological sense of time. As the narrator, Dora constantly jumps from the past back to the present and vice versa.
in conclusion of this paper i would like to say that magic realism is not a style of writing that writers adopt merely to create that atmosphere of magic wonder fantasy and other worldly things in their novels but most of the time it is employed by the writers as a vehicle to depict the deep and hidden realities of life for instance as we have analyzed in this study itself that the major practitioners like alejo carpentier and tony morrison used magic realism in their novels to criticize the evil practices of slavery and to highlight the brutal treatments that slaves were subjected to similarly almost all writers who adopt this style try to convey a deeper sense of meaning through their novels on various subjects that they deal with the main aim behind its usage is to understand the reality better it brings deep uncomfortable and harsh truths of the world to the consciousness of the reader in order to bring a change in some way magic realism therefore allows the writers to question and critique the accepted realities in social levels that function in the world in various forms thank you so much uh thank you garima uh i would like to invite any queries or any uh, exchange of ideas here from the participants anyone would like to interact because her paper was an in depth and in detail it was i think six writers she has explored six writers um who who uh, you know write um and they are they are world renowned writers who have taken this genre of writing in uh, magic realism uh, she has taken uh, the you know uh, defining uh, from uh, uh, franz ro and then she goes on with carpentier then gabriel garcia marquis and then she takes up um franz kafka then uh, isabel and then uh, these two more so uh, she has in, in fact dealt with six writers and almost six works in detail i congratulate you um, so far a very good paper in detail um, yeah yeah but uh, since we are running out of time and i don't want to leave uh, lesser time for our next participant and our next presenter is uh, ms kirti sharma she's a phd scholar from department of english and modern european languages at banastali vidyapeet rajasthan and she is accompanied by dr sunil kumar jha assistant professor banastali vidyapeet rajasthan and they're going to present a paper uh, which is titled representation of disillusionment uh dissolution representation of disillusioned identities faced by the marginalized in tony morrison's the bluest eye and a leslie mammon silko ceremony so um this is the last paper of our session and uh, i invite them um uh, straight away for their presentation uh welcome uh to the session kirti thank you so much ma'am am i audible yes excuse me ma excuse thank me you. Excuse me, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, Isha. Ma'am, uh, actu actually, I uh, am supposed to be in technical session five. So I would like to ask you: Is it is it uh, technical uh, technical session five going on? This is the fourth session, uh, Isha. This is the fourth session going on. Okay, because technical. We are about to end this session. Ah, uh, yes, we got delayed okay. because of the uh, keynote speakers. Uh, joining oh. us uh, abroad, uh, Mr. Uh, I think uh, they they joined uh, in between. So we are continuing, and this is the last presentation of our fourth session. Yes, Isha. So uh, Kirti, uh, yes, welcome on board, and uh, you please start uh, right away. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So my paper deals with uh, the hardships uh, that a marginalized character faces in the quest of identity and acceptance in the community, along with examining several movements in their struggles. So, as the topic says, representation of disillusioned identities faced by the marginalized in Toni Morrison's *The Blue Star* and Silko's ceremony. So, losing one's identity in today's world is not a new concept. Every human wishes to have an influential status, and America, as being the hub of globalization, is a place where everybody tries to interact with one another, wants to participate in multiculture, and wants to be a part of. the world where everyone is coming from every other world, every other corner of the world 
But here lies one part of the identity that faces utter confusion of belongingness, thereby gifting humanity with disillusionment. Eric Erickson discursively talks about identity crisis in how a person shuffles between cultures and communities faces. Americanized worlds, uh, Americanized world is not a place where it is only dealing with the people that coming from that are coming from different areas, but also the American natives that don't fluctuate between cultures and communities, but are picked and dropped for being colored or natives or indigenous. Tony Morrison talks about the identity crisis, the struggle for individual rights in general and women's rights in particular is the prominent theme of her works. Her novel, The Blue West Eye, deals with a young girl, a young colored girl named Picola, who is seen struggling to attain an acceptable identity in a family and society that cherishes and improves of American standards of fair skin and light eyes, neither coming from nor belonging to the mainstream culture and forces cultural assimilation and the consequential side effects. Similarly, Silko showcases the importance of thriving history and roots in present distorted time in order to claim one's lost identity and Native American culture. Her works try to pose a resistance to post-colonialism. Her character, Tayo in Silko's uh, ceremony, is a victim of identity crisis because of his experience in and of multiple cultures and having a mixed identity. Americanization has been a process that has helped a large number of lives skyrocketing in terms of finances, careers, education, lives, and almost everything. America has always been a land of opportunities and the claimed American dream. However, the advent, the advent of the whites and the cycles of colonialism did not leave any stone unturned to make colored and native question their self-identity. Works of Morrison and Silco are laid with the fact that while the promising ideal of upward mobility is the aim of the American dream, the community of people that does not confirm with the mainstream faces the consequence of being marginalized, termed dark, other, or indigenous. Their identities are laid with lack of affirmation, having marginalized voice, resistance, silence, revolt, colonial oppression, and imposition of hybridity. The novels show the bleak side of Americanization. Tony Morrison's The Blue Star deals with Pecola, who faces shame that she receives from her parents and society that makes her into believing that American blue eyes are the most cherished and accepted traits of one being beautiful. The child's mother has faced the same kind of uh, marginalization and alienation in the society, and she has passed on her desire to have blue eyes on her, onto her daughter. This effort of reaching near to assimilation by her validates her existence in a society that is colonized by the superiority and hegemony of the whites. In one telephonic interview with Salman Rushdie, Morrison herself talks about the plight of being dark and a woman in a, soci in a society that's hegemonized with the white and a man. She questions the status of being outcast and vacillated in a country that assures freedom and success for all. She represents the turmoil and contradictions that Pecola goes through. She gives her character an option to prevent the crisis by adopting the ways of the mainstream. Pecola consumes the Shirley Temple, quote unquote, to drink and assimilate with the white culture. Mr. Yakovsky in the novel is the living symbol of the novel of the uh, in the novel is the living symbol symbol of the causing ruin of the Americanization as he treats her as if she's invisible. Morrison published this novel only after a few years of the civil rights movements in the United States that continued between 1950s and 60s at aiming at abolishing racism, discrimination, and slavery. Nicola's dream of having blue eyes in her quest of identity shows the hardships of how the colored are molded into their cells by being guided by little guidance and wrong approvals is a blot in a society that Morrison aims to remove. Just like Piccola, her father, Charlie, is a secluded person in the community, but not for being colored or for being a man, but for his deeds. Raping his own daughter is his quest of, in his quest of old recognizable identity sets him apart from the moral world. America's aim to Americanize appears overpowering and declining at the same time. The melting pot of America does filter in what's required and is ready for assimilation, which is one of the reasons why the blue style was banned. 
But the banning of the books is not a new trend in the American system. A decade ago, almost a decade ago, in 2012, the district schools in the Tuscan prohibited a number of books in which Rethinking Columbus was one that was banned as it showed a different perspective of the American land. It launched a path which could, le which could lead to a better identification of the voices that were silenced and the colonialism by the Europeans and the whites. Usurping the land from those who are the sole owners and who worship that land is the power exercised by the whites in this case. The advent of the whites, rise in globalization, exploitation of lands and resources by the forest industries caused unrest amongst the native tribes. American Indian movement came in support of the Indians against the ill treatment and poverty they had to live with. However, the traces were shut the traces were foreshadowed in the 1830s when the President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act in order to relocate the Indians from the native lands. The forced movement to the West robbed them of their identity and voice. The Indians were colonized by the Europeans and Americans equally. Leslie Mormon Silco reinforces the Indian culture by using the oral storytelling, worshipping of nature and faith in tradition and culture. Her novel ceremony reinstates the community to the origins of the Native Americans or Indians. The novel talks about the war veteran Tayo, who becomes who belongs to a mixed culture and faces disillusionment after serving in the U.S. Army. As a child of an unknown white man and an Indian woman, a hybrid identity already, he faces difficulties and encounters alienation. His aunties drawing lines between him and her son Rocky renders him alienated and marginalized. The death of Joshua is another event that keeps haunting him. The only resort for finding belongingness is assimilation. Tayo's effort of getting accepted into the American culture by participating in the war contributes more towards being colonized and exploited by the dominant whites. He and his friends, like Harley, reminisce over about the time in war when they were respected in all the terms, when they were in uniforms. The deep examination of the situation makes him realize the discrimination and exploitation of the native Indians. The need to show their Americanized identity was always emphasized by the dominant, as it is quoted, now I know you boys love America as much as we do, but this is your big chance to show it, unquote. The notion of hybridity ends in disillusionment with the self and the community. This assimilation was not only present and nuanced in terms of novels and writers, but was sponsored by the cultural assimilation policy that turned from, 19, uh, from 1719 to 1920. Education system is one tool that can lead the dominant to exercise control. Therefore, the policy was implemented by establishing uh, boarding schools where natives were taught the Euro-American curriculum. Anything not white was labeled nonsense, as quoted in the novel Ceremony. There are visioners use of the term post-Indian literature refers to the literature that merged with the naming of the indigenous peoples as Indians and the literature being hybrid. With taking the role of hybrid identity, they seek answers to their dilemma by turning to ceremonies and native culture. Bethany, a medicine man, takes help of oral tradition to guide Tayo and his lost and his lost comrades to revive and acquire the pride in their Indianness. Bethany claims, I quote, we can deal with white people, with their machines and their beliefs. We can because we invited white people, we invented white people, unquote. Thus, the ceremony seems to have restored and reconstructed the identity. It is complete when Teo spends the night in the mine dug by the whites and keeps himself by, by attacking the colonizers whom he tortured, whom he see torturing Harley to death. I'm sorry. Though his act of resisting completes the ceremony, it also shows that his identity is all disintegrated and disillusioned as he ultimately surrenders to the act of suppression by the colonizers. To conclude, I would say, while Morrison wrote for the revival and survival of the Afro-Americans and Silco stands as a prominent person of the Native American Renaissance, 
Both have been spokespersons of the marginalized community and have attempted to and have attempted to give voice to resistance to those silenced for long. The paper that I read deals with the uh, deals with the works majorly under Baba's theory of hybridity and its impact with the post-colonial aspect and so to say anti-colonial theme. So this is how I end because of the time constraint. I hope I did not go out of place. Thank you. Oh, uh, congratulations, Kirti. It was a wonderful attempt uh, at, uh, you know, trying to sum up what America stands for through the eyes of uh, Tony Morrison. And uh, I think uh, I think it was a wonderful presentation because it talked about how Tony uh, herself, being African American, kind of you know brings out her self herself into what she writes, and kind of comes of age. America comes of age, but don't we see things happening even today? Don't we see that there is a black man killed in Brooklyn in 2021? Mm -hmm. And then we see an Indian becoming the vice president of, of America. So I think America still stands and American literature still stands. Uh, it, it's growing, it's evolving, but it, it, it of course has to, you know, thrive on what america stands for it's multicultural it's multilingual and it's it's always kept uh, itself open uh, no matter what even uh, when uh, you know uh, 11 9 happens even when uh, you have uh, you know uh, joe biden being elected and at the same time you have the civilians entering the the, uh, the most sacred place of the parliament so um, there where the government sits so i think uh, when we look at american literature we see that it's a, a, a full ethos ethos a, a full uh, you know uh, kind of environment which is all inclusive and at the same time people have a, have have their voices being uh, heard people have their voices being written no matter even if they are rejected or they become subaltern somewhere they are much on sitting on margins but they find their voices and they speak out i think um having said that when we look at all the papers presented in this session i must say that the session was a very um a uh, very uh, vibrant session with presenters having come across various themes and uh, kind of looking at America and its literature uh, as, as a wholesome, organic, uh, thriving life form, you know. And uh, it was a wonderful session that, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, grateful to uh, the organizers, uh, Dr. Vasudeva and uh, Dr. Abhyodita, of having involved me in this uh, wonderful session. Thank you so much, all presenters, and thank you, organizers. Thank you.